are a lot of ways to reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome to Southfield Cable 15, a Wednesday night matchup between Stony Creek and Southfield A&T. Stony Creek will get the ball rolling. Trevor Smith Jr., one of the smoothest guards in the league, matched up with Malik Taylor. These two squads meeting for the first time this year. The Stony Creek team hoping to extend a two-game winning streak to three in a row. Smith Jr., the leading scorer on most nights. The corner, Felton, his triple off the mark. The leading rebounder on the A&T side, Caleb Banks. Vacuums in the board, and the Warriors will get their first possession of this Wednesday night underway with Anthony Davis at the point guard spot. Such a leader, one of the seniors, and a strong finisher around the rim. Banks also on the floor with Jalen Mack, who has the ball right now in the corner. His first three of the night. Off the mark, and the board vacuumed in by David Engel at 6-6. They go right back down low. Blew the bunny in the paint. Felton had an opportunity to break the scoring seal, but couldn't. Darrell Buchanan, the head coach for Southfield a and Watching his team as they try to feed off of a win last Friday over Adams. A group that likes to operate in their half-court sets. Just a matter of whether or not the execution is there on a consistent basis so far this season. In the half-court set, this is where most of the points come from. Banks couldn't finish on his first attempt of the night. And we get a jump ball called down low. Possession will stick with a &T. On the floor for Stony Creek. As I mentioned, Trevor Smith Jr., such an elite guard. He should be pretty fun to watch tonight. In addition to Ozzy Villafuerte, along with Jacob Felton. Adam Grazko on the floor as well for Stony Creek. Malik Taylor getting a rare start for the Warriors. Soars for the board and was able to deflect it off a Stony Creek player to keep it on this end with a and Bit of a different starting lineup overall for the Warriors today. Xavier James, who missed the layup there, not typically in the starting five, but gets the go tonight. A player who is a nice boost typically off the bench. You see the handle of Smith Jr. on display to the corner for Grace Coe. His three is long. Stony Creek now 0 for 2 from distance. And both sides still trying to find their offensive rhythm. Davis, such an excellent game manager for the Warriors. Banks, a player who isn't afraid to step out and knock down a three as well at 6'6", six 250. Six, Jalen Mack, athletic guard, who can also shoot the three, nearly turned it over. Banks used all 6'6", six six that time to keep the possession alive and then drew a foul. Foul called on Jacob Felton, his first. Zamir Dixon getting set to check in on the A&T side. It'll be two free throws for Banks, meanwhile, who was named the seventh best player in Oakland County entering this season, regarded as one of the best post players in the county overall. And again, can stretch the floor, knock down the three. But it's really that toughness and brute style of play as you see the build that he also utilizes on the football field, a Louisville commit at defensive end. Also one of the top 30 players in the state when it comes to football. And he gets the first couple of points on the board for a &T tonight. Open three from Grace Coe is down. The sophomore guard on varsity this season drills the first bucket of the night for Stony Creek. the post entry being denied 
for Banks there, matched up with Villafuerte. That's six foot six on six foot six. And this time, ANT never really got anything brewing and turned it over. Again, Xander Dixon on the floor right now. I beg your pardon, Zamir Dixon, one of the two Dixon brothers. Xander is his other brother. Now Lance Fogelberg will make his way into the game on the Stony Creek side of things. Stony Creek off to a one for four start from the field. Lone bucket coming from Gray's Co. Smith Jr. When he's rolling, that's when the offense typically is. Knocks down his first bucket of the night. He, he can hit those tough contested shots. And they'll let him go one-on-one. -on -one. The senior leader of this Stony Creek team makes it five in a row after a 2-0 start for the Warriors. And now a foul called down low on Banks, a player who simply can't get into foul trouble on the Warriors side of things because he is such a key part of their production and such a rim protector defensively as well. That's always something to keep an eye on when watching this Warrior team is, can they stay out of foul trouble? Mixing it up today when it comes to the starting lineup. Mack off the floor now. Which has Dixon matched up with Smith Jr. And Smith Jr. blows by him. Leaning jumper, no good but a foul called. So a couple of quick fouls on key players, both offensively and defensively for a and Zamir Dixon hit with his first. Shortly after, Caleb Banks found his first foul. Alex Ryder makes his way in on the Stony Creek side as Smith Jr. buys one of two at the line. Quick 6-0 run for Stony Creek after not scoring through the first three minutes of the game. Again, Stony Creek looking for a third consecutive win. They force a turnover there. ANT has struggled with giveaways this season. Stony Creek isn't a group to really get up and down the floor quite as much. Smith Jr. can do it from all three levels, off the mark on his first triple attempt of the night. Stony Creek now one for three from distance. And back comes Anthony Davis on the a and side of things. Malik Taylor to Davis, a wing three, off the mark and long rebound. Finds Lance Fogelberg, he'll settle things down. And allow it to breathe a little bit. Shade under four to play in the opening quarter. Daryl Buchanan on the sideline for a and Directing orders. Adam Grisco has nailed one three. This time gets into the paint. Tried to find Smith Jr. and couldn't. Ryder, the kick out. The ball movement that you typically see out of this Stony Creek offense. Leads to a three. No good. But as per usual, the long rebound favors the offensive team. They'll reload. Board inhaled by James, who again got the start today in the A&T lineup. This game picks up a bit of a rhythm. Dixon turned it over. Two turnovers in the past three possessions on the A&T side of things. Dixon can also do that, though. He takes it right back into the lane. Lovely Euro step. Lefty finish wasn't true. A&T has struggled with that at times this season. The execution can be there, but is the finishing end there? Remains the question. Just two points through nearly six minutes in this opening quarter on the Warriors side of things. Meanwhile, Stony Creek, six points, can they make it eight? Short range jumper from Felton, a bit short, board is tapped out of bounds and it'll stick with Stony Creek. David Engel comes back in on the Stony Creek side. Defensively, you have to be so attentive against the Stony Creek team because 
They whip it around quickly, so your defensive assignment certainly has to be uh, marked up and aware of the rotations that are being made. It's an 8 2 start for Stony Creek on the road, using that ball movement to get ANZ off balance. We'll step aside on cable 15. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. Welcome back inside of Southfield a t High School. Wednesday night action on Southfield Cable 15. Banks with a bit, a bit of a mismatch down low against Felton. a t opts to kick it around. Dixon splits the double. James couldn't handle the feed initially and has to back it out. A dry spell that has run over a few minutes now for this a t team. Desperately in need of a bucket, and Banks finally finds it to stem the tide in this opening quarter. He has all four of the Warrior points so far, nearly through an entire quarter. That's the second three of the game for Stony Creek by way of Lance Fogelberg. This is why we say, though, you know, can a and find offense outside of Banks? How do they function without him on the floor? In the midst of a less than ideal start, it's a resilient group, though. Can they recover? Davis, lovely double clutch, got it to go. And now someone other than Banks has re registered their name in the score sheet on the a and side. The change of direction from Smith is really fun to watch. However, couldn't quite finish there. And back comes Dixon in transition for the Warriors. Davis working with a shade under 60 seconds to go here in the opening quarter. Dixon navigates into the paint, banks a three. Noted he is not afraid at six foot six to step out and take a triple. He has four of the Warriors' first six tonight. Angle, a three-point threat. Over to Lance Fogelberg. You can say the same about him. Really four out of the five on the floor right now for Stony Creek can hit from distance. The blow-by and a foul called after the drive from Felton. They turn the call around and it'll turn out to be an offensive foul. So kudos to Banks on that possession. Again, does it both defensively and offensively. This time takes the charge and the Warriors will regain possession. Davis squeaks his way past Smith and lowers his shoulder as he draws a foul. David Engel second, team third, and the last couple of minutes have been better for a and after a rough stretch of nearly four consecutive minutes without a bucket. First free throw rattles home for Anthony Davis. Engel does check out, and on the side for Stony Creek, Michael Lambert, 6'2 guard, will check in. Stony Creek can essentially play for the final shot here. Under 10 to go for Smith Jr. Odds are he might end up taking it. Looks like he will. An opt to kick it. The long three is well short. Vogelberg shot long and it's an 11-8 first quarter lead for Stony Creek. Stan is precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to load their minds. 
Dare to explore. Dare to STEM. Learn more at She Can STEM. Welcome back into Southfield Cable 15. Stony Creek with an 11-8 lead on the road, looking for their third consecutive win. It's the ball movement we saw pay dividends in that opening quarter. The Stony Creek team in the midst of a, a pretty busy stretch. This matchup on a Wednesday night here at A&T is a part of four games this week. They'll play Groves on Friday and then Troy on Sunday to wrap up a seven-day seven stretch with minimal practice time and a lot of action on the floor in important matchups. Lengthy possession here brewing as they try to find something offensively, not afraid to wait it out and look for that best shot. Again, no shot clock in the state of Michigan. Quality possessions are the name of the game, both defensively and offensively. Open three behind the screen for Smith Jr. That's about as open as you'll get and well off the mark. Davis trying to take advantage in transition. Couldn't. Banks flies in for the offensive board. Is a third time the charm as they couldn't capitalize. And then a turnover. So a blown opportunity there on the A&T side of things. Again, with limited possessions at this level, you simply can't give up too many chances like that. A&T opts to double on this possession. Fogelberg, a three-point shooter, was calling for it. Stony Creek went the other way, and it paid off. That's a three just behind the line from Smith Jr., his second triple of the game. Makes this a two-possession game, 14-8, the Stony Creek lead. Six-point advantage with six to play in the opening half. Jalen Carpenter seeing his first action on the A&T side found Dixon who then found Banks the finishing touch not there once again and then what should be a travel called is indeed too many steps on the part of Dixon Ozzy Villafuerte makes his way back in along with Aiden Grisco Without fans in the building, you can hear the vocal tones coming from the sidelines on both ends. Stony Creek bench saying, you got to drive it. There is the drive and a foul. Count it. One more coming on the part of Angle. I beg your pardon, Alex Ryder. Dixon driving to the rim and drew a foul. Willa Fuerte at 6 6, the guilty party. And A&T going pretty deep into their bench today. Also seeing an appearance from Evan Tarak, who doesn't play very often. I beg your pardon, Emil Gamble. And five on the floor right now for Stony Creek. 
Trevor Smith Jr., Grisco, out there as well with Lance Fogelberg, who has the ball right now. And Jacob Felton in a front court as he swaps in for Villa Fuerte with Alex Ryder. Ryder, dangerous feed, found Fogelberg, pirouette in the paint. And Carpenter will pick up a foul. Haven't heard much from Jalen Carpenter today. There have been times when he's also been in the starting lineup. Noted that Malik Taylor found the start for ANC today. Carpenter, a player with such an adept understanding of the offense, three number four of the first half goes down for Stony Creek. Jones nails it, and it's a nine-point game-high advantage for Stony Creek on the road. Davis trying to find a way to get ANT out of what is their second offensive dry spell of the game. Again, had one of these kind of spurts early on in the first quarter. Davis utilizing his skills defensively to pick the passing lane and finish for two to stem the tide. But you want to have as least amount of dry spells as possible against the Stony Creek team because they eat up a lot of clock on this end of the floor. It's almost as if you're playing a football team that is methodical, <laughs> maybe pro style. A little Big Ten grind it out type of play, keeping it on the ground, to use an analogy there. But uh, as Banks isn't on the floor for the A&T side of things, their leading scorer, who is a Louisville commit on the gridiron, especially when he isn't on the floor. You, you want to avoid as many bad spells as possible. But every once in a while, he does need a breather as Fogelberg heads to the line. Dixon wide open from three, as open as you'll get. And then a frustrating turnover as Mack couldn't quite corral it. Mack another player, if they can find a way on the a and side to get him involved offensively, could brew some momentum. Usually with Mack, it, it, it's defense to offense and trying to translate his energy over to the scoring side of things. This time, they can maybe try to do that as Davis finds his second steal of the game. Mack attempted the offensive board and the stick back. A no-go. Gamble couldn't finish either, and now he's called for a foul. Xavier James, who got the start for Southfield A&T, is back into the matchup. Smith Jr., and David Engel, and now Smith will look for his third three and connects. And the three-point party continues for Stony Creek in this second quarter. They've now nailed five, and it's an 11-point advantage. Couple of quick shovels, tic-tac-toe in the paint on the a and side. Two free throws coming up for Carpenter. So 
So Willa Fuerte checks back in on the Stony Creek side of things. Tallest player on the floor at 6'6". Six, six. Can he take advantage with Banks being out? Most of the work, though, has been done on the perimeter thus far for Stony Creek. Similar to the ANC offense, a lot of ball screens, a lot of off-ball movement. The triple Zeppelin opening up. That's number six. Jones finds his second three of the game. And it's now a 26 to 14 advantage for Stony Creek. Opening things up in the latter stages of this second quarter. 125 to play in the second. And the three ball has been the name of the game for Stony Creek in quarter number two. 80 seconds with which to work for the Warriors. Mack just desperately trying to find his groove. Dixon in the body of Villafuerte climbed the ladder, found his own offensive rebound, but we've got a foul called prior to the shot. The second on Trevor Smith Jr., who is the orchestrator of the offense for Stony Creek. Paperwork has been sorted out over at the scores table. And ANT, again, a big final minute here, just trying to claw back into it in any way you can. At this point, you, you could even envision yourself playing for the last shot because you know Stony Creek will boot out the clock if they do get the ball back. Making the most out of each time you have the basketball is vastly important against the Stony Creek team. Can ANT find a bucket to at least make it a 10-point, maybe even single-digit game here down in the final minute? Dixon blew the bunny. There's been too much of that so far for ANT, but a chance to reload. Half a minute to go in the opening half. Ball away, Jay, from Davis goes down. And now, here is that methodical, grind it out, kind of pro-style, football-style pace we talked about early on in this half for Stony Creek. They'll utilize it to wrap up the second quarter. At the controls once again, it's Smith Jr. Kicks it. Jones, he's nailed four threes already. Couldn't find a fifth. And Angle drew a foul on the offensive board with a shade under three seconds to play in the opening half. In the bonus, so a chance to make it a 12-point game. Angle, another guy on this Stony Creek team that just crashes the glass hard, wonderful vision. Watching him on film, you can tell quickly why they trust him with so many minutes. It indeed will be a 12-point game after one half of play here at ANC High School. Let's step aside on Southfield Cable 15. Anthony Davis and the Southfield ANT Warriors hoping for a fresh start in the final 16 minutes of this matchup. Trailing by 12 and simply in need of more possessions and quality possessions as we start the third. Xavier James, as we saw in the starting lineup early on in this game, back on the floor in the starting five to begin the second half and gets the Warriors off to hopefully the right foot. 
10 point game. David Engel on the floor with Smith Jr. Jones, who was so good in that first half, finds a quick bucket on the Stony Creek side of things. Does it inside and out, so difficult to contain. It's not really a, a one-man thing either. It's the fact that the entire offense is constantly moving and they're constantly skipping the ball around and anyone is really an offensive threat, so you can't double team. They give it away in the backcourt, A&T does, which will earn Stony Creek another chance at extending this lead. It's at a game-high 12. Malik Taylor back on the floor for A&T as well, another player who doesn't typically start but found himself in the starting five today for the Warriors. Smith Jr. shoots over him at six foot one. Villafuerte at 6'6". Six, six. Unable to finish over Banks, his 6'6 six, six counterpart, who hopes to get involved in the early stages of this third, but you can't do it like that. Back-to-back -back turnovers in for two out of the first three possessions here for a and in this third quarter. Now Felton will inbounds to Jones and take the point guard duties on this trip. As Smith Jr. appears to be playing off the ball right now. A&T able to strip it away. Davis, his third steal of the game, doesn't lead to points. A rare transition opportunity for Stony Creek. They don't really like to run, but they'll take it when they can. Smith Jr. will buy a bucket and a foul whenever he has the opportunity. A chance for one more on the part of Stony Creek's leading scorer. Dixon seconds. And one more free throw coming up here for Smith Jr. Unable to find it. We might have gotten a lane violation there, though, called on Engel. Officials come together. Meanwhile, Smith Jr. appears to think he's going back to the free throw line. We'll see if that is the case. The turnovers, as they have throughout the season, we've seen them plaguing A&T, both in the first half and the second half, multiple dry spells, which is something you just can't really afford against the Stony Creek team, and now beginning to creep into the early stages of the third, too. Can they get Banks involved, who was relatively quiet in the second quarter while Stony Creek just exploded from distance, nailing five threes total in the second quarter of play. It'll be a, an inbounds after an odd sequence there from an official standpoint, and Jones took advantage. Now it's a game-high 16-point lead for Stony Creek. Jalen Mack always in the midst of creeping into the passing lanes. Nearly took it away, and then a travel call to Stony Creek ends up giving it away. Zamir Dixon, haven't seen his younger brother Xander today. Banks the drop back for Mack, senior to senior connection. And it's a 14 point game with 5.35 to play in the third. Long three this time, came up shy from Smith Jr. Not afraid to step back, as you can see. We've seen him knock down a few different tough contested shots today. But pushed, pushed the range a bit there. Hoping to make it a 17-point game. Still a 14-point advantage for Stony Creek. Kick to the corner. James looking for a second bucket at half. Couldn't find it, however, Banks could.
And again, Banks ranked as the seventh best post player. I should say player overall in Oakland County, regarded as one of the best players in Oakland County. A tough spill. And James there fell right on his back and slow to get up. That was a hard fall as Villa Fuerte was under him. And we'll step aside. Both players go down after an unfortunate sequence. We'll be right back here on Cable 15. a lot of ways to reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. The free throws coming up for Smith Jr. One of the better free throw shooters on the floor tonight. And 6'2", senior point guard, such a leader and consummate pro. Teammates love him. Coaching staff loves him. He makes it a 14-point game. The entry feed to Banks was able to slip right behind Angle. Took advantage after Villa Fuerte went to the bench. Still monitoring his status. So did James on the A&T side. So the Dixon brothers are on the floor together now. Xander and Zamir. Difficult to tell them apart if they don't have numbers three and four on. Xander is three. Zamir is four. Lance Fogelberg makes his way back in on the uh, for Stony Creek. Here is Anthony Davis, who has been the floor general today for the Warriors. A bright spot in the midst of a performance that has its has had its darker moments when it comes to offense. Jalen Mack trying to find his light offensively and did so there with a lovely floater around the rim. And Davis has utilized his defensive skill set to try to force the pace and push it in transition for a &T when they've needed the bucket. Fogelberg got off to a nice start today. The poke away from behind on the part of Dixon didn't lead to a turnover, but a tie-up down low and a jump ball. We'll keep it here. Timeout called on the part of Stony Creek, a lead that was at one point up to 16, down to 10 on Cable 15. An easy steal there for Mack, usually has one or two a game. That was one of the for more free giveaways that he'll take, and he got it up to Dixon, who finished. This is Xander. Xander couldn't connect on the free throw, but Zamir finds the rebound, which leads to a three for Davis. She came up shy. Mack, as per usual, stuck with the play and makes it a six-point game. Again, lead was 16 at one point for Stony Creek. We have ourselves a matchup. Three minutes to play, and it's a two-possession battle here at Southfield ANC High School.
Stony Creek out of the timeout, trying to stem the tide. This is one of their driest spells of the game and undoubtedly the best stretch of the game for the Warriors. All of a sudden, a team that once trailed by 16 can cut it to four. Layup missed by Davis. They'd love to have that one back. Stony Creek trying to push a bit out of their elements. But perhaps a change of pace is what they need. Instead, they'll get into the half-court sets that have provided them success today. Smith Jr. isolated on the right side, tried to skip it down low to Lambert, but he wasn't expecting the pass. So turnovers, as we noted, those same turnovers that were affecting ANT in the early stages of the third, now beginning to harm the play of Stony Creek, a group that, again, only has so many possessions in a game because their offense typically bleeds the clock down. You can have anywhere from 45 to minute-long possessions, which only leaves you with so many throughout the course of a game. So if you're in a dry spell and the other team is hot, they can take advantage. That's what ANT is doing right now. Big possession here, though. Under two minutes to play in the third. ANT trailing by six. It's a corner three from Mack. Back to back, pretty good looks for Southfield ANT, but just wouldn't go down. Smith Jr. with a bit of space, stops to kick it back out. Working against Mack, one of the tougher defenders in the league. Fogelberg's three is good. Just what the doctor ordered for a Stony Creek team that fell underneath a dry spell. Had been a few minutes without a bucket. ANT cut the lead down to six. All of a sudden, Stony Creek forces a turnover, and Mack will take the foul. The lead is back up to nine after a couple of possessions for the Warriors, during which it looked like they might have been on the brink of pulling within six and just couldn't quite find the buckets they needed. You wonder if at the end of this game, they look back at those possessions and say, what if that shot went down? Still plenty of time to go in this one. Under a minute to play in the third. Smith Jr., that could be big. Knocks down a three. Back-to-back -back triples for Stony Creek. And it's back up to 12. They can hit you just like that. It's kind of paradoxical, isn't it? Because as slow as the offense is, it can come at you in waves. And all of a sudden, you look up, and you're down 12 again. This time they push the pace. Lead is 14. An 8-0 run for Stony Creek, and now Dixon having trouble in the backcourt. Hits his brother, who nearly turned it over. 12 and a half to play in the third quarter, and Stony Creek has rediscovered their rhythm. Ryan Bradford re-enters the game for Stony Creek. Quante Pryor back in for ANT. Essentially playing for the last shot here and feels like a big one for the Warriors. Banks hasn't been involved in this third quarter. A three from Dixon, strong, a frustrating close for ANT, close that you'd love to have on the Stony Creek side of things to the third. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. What? Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. The final eight minutes of action here at Southfield a and High School. Zamir Dixon and his group on an extended run without a bucket dating back to the third quarter. Largest lead for Stony Creek in this one is 16. At one point, though, a and cut that down to six but couldn't get any closer when they had opportunities. 
Then Stony Creek pounced on Mistake just like that and ended the third on an 8-0 run. That's swatted out of bounds emphatically by Dixon, adding a block to his highlight reel on the night. Anthony Davis checks back into the game for Quance Pryor. Banks again hoping to get involved in the second half and forces his way into the stat sheet there. Drawing a foul and he'll go to the line for one more. So the free throw doesn't go, but Banks will have two more. Again, we noted earlier in the broadcast that Banks is committed to Louisville in the football field defensive end. Kind of a funny story. He didn't really know he ever really wanted to play football. Said he thought, uh, I never was going to play football. His favorite sport growing up was basketball. That was his thing, but then his family member, had a few family members that said to him, you're 6'6", you're six six, 250, you might as well try the gridiron or give it a whirl. And ever since he's done that, it's become this new, wonderful part of his life. Said that he doesn't know where he would be without football. and Had, had over 30 offers at defensive end, ultimately chose Louisville. The likes of Michigan, Michigan State, we're, we're both in the mix. Pac-12 schools, SEC schools. There's the strength on display once more. It leads to Mack taking a three. Strong, and back comes Stony Creek. And they kick to the corner. Angle, more open than he thought he was. Hesitated a minute, then took the three and nailed it. It has been a three-point party tonight for Stony Creek. Fogelberg, the latest to nail one. 14-point game. Fogelberg confident after that last possession. That's the ball movement when Stony Creek is at their best. You can see the off-ball cuts. Fogelberg thought about going over Mac. Bank joins the party, which leads to a second thought, but the second thought is a good one. It's another three, this time from David Engel. Back-to-back -back possessions with a triple, and the lead has vaulted up to 17 with a shade over six to play in the fourth. Banks navigating to the rim, able to elude the oncoming defender. And David Engel the other way, though. Engel is right back at it and tacks in another bucket. And maybe they catch you off guard every once in a while when, the, when Stony Creek does decide to run. Davis into the lane.
Wonderful rotations around the perimeter, as you can hear from the sideline. Didn't lead to a three, but led to two free throws for Anthony Davis. Davis goes one for two. He'll earn a third opportunity here on this trip. Just wonder if a little too little too late at this moment. Still plenty of time to go, but that won't earn you anything positive. Second chance. Fogelberg thought about a three, instead steps inside the arc. Board off the air ball to Carpenter. Outlet feed Dixon. Negotiating through the air, didn't draw a foul. Near turnover, Carpenter saves it. Hectic sequence. Here is Davis who tried to skip it to Banks. Double comes, cross court feed, extra feed. Davis three. Front of the rim, no. Outlet the other way. Pace picks up a bit. And it ultimately slows down by way of a foul called on Carpenter. Heading the line, Will B. Smith Jr who has had his fair trips to the free throw line tonight. Knocking down both free throws. And Trevor Smith, under five to play, time dwindling. a and beginning to empty their bench a bit. On the floor now, Tian Lament. In addition to James, who checks back in after the earlier in injury. So good to see him back on the floor. And Jalen Mack on the floor as well. Turnover in the backcourt and leads to another Smith bucket. This is a... Stony Creek team that appears as though they'll stretch this winning streak out to three in a row in the midst of a busy four-game week. And yeah, this Wednesday night on Friday, they'll have Groves and then Sunday, Troy, to wrap up uh, a fun but hectic week of basketball for a Stony Creek team that's having fun tonight. Up 20, a game-high advantage. Jones has been a big part of that. He's nailed four threes of his own. It has been a combined, well-orchestrated, sparkling offensive effort tonight for Stony Creek. We'll step aside on Cable 15. Natural disasters are a fact of life in the U.S. And between activities and school, chances are you won't be with your kids when they happen. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids can help your children feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Mack, that's about as open as he's been tonight. Nails the three, searching for positives at this stage on the A&T side. Mack has been one of them. His effort has not lacked. It never does. 
Kyle Sims also getting some action on the floor. Ray and T now. Mack looking for back-to-back -back buckets. He's called for a foul. An effort foul, though. Smith Jr., that's what he does so well. Difficult for the first defender to stick with him. By the time you get to the second level, there are shooters that are typically open, and he is such a good passer, but can finish too. And that's what's made it dangerous on this Southfield a &T defense tonight. The stop and start, shiftiness, acceleration, and deceleration is so fun to watch with this 6'1 senior point guard. This time defended by James. Opts to kick it to Jones as they move it around with the shade under two to play in this fourth and final quarter. It's all cosmetic now. Open to add another onto the highlight reel. Couldn't do so. The stick back from Mack. Able to tip it home. There's that persistent effort of his that doesn't lack no matter what the score is. Doesn't matter how many how much time is left on that clock. He's always going for ANT, and that's what you love about senior leaders. And so you need out of your senior leaders too if you're going to bounce back from a night like this. Some late substitutions for ANC. Ethan Taylor and Quante Pryor will check back in. And seldom used Kyle Sims on the floor as well. Stony Creek came, conquered, played their game. The vast majority of this outing, they did what they wanted to do from a tempo pace. We're able to limit that really throughout the game. ANT can feed off of that and find momentum. At one point, the lead went down to six, but then vaulted back up to 20. It's now 13 with the bench in the matchup on both sides for Stony Creek. Trying to find their groove at the right stage. If you're a basketball fan, you love March, and it has arrived. Stony Creek hoping to find that March magic at the right time of the season. At the moment, they'll extend this winning streak to three in a row. ANC after the win the other night, they'll drop this one in a bit of a letdown performance overall. It's really the turnovers again that have kind of hovered over their narrative a little too often this season. And when you're playing a team like Stony Creek, who again can almost compare to a football team bleeding out the clock in lengthy possessions, lengthy drives down the field, it hurts you. And it did today offensively. Never truly got Banks involved the way they would have liked to. Again, a pleasure to have you with us on Southfield Cable 15. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. 56-43 the final in favor of Stony Creek.